Okay, good day guys. Hope the weekend going good for you guys. So we are going to get into it quick and fast. But just thanking our 750 subscribers for subscribing. We greatly appreciate it. And for those who haven't subscribed as yet. Just kindly asking you to subscribe. As it is a free way to support the channel. So we can give you guys better and more consistent content. And remember the golden rule as well to like the video. So many of you guys would have seen the squad announced recently for the friendly against the US in Austria. Now this squad for this upcoming game is a very interesting one. I was looking at the list and I was trying to figure out what is going on here. When you look at this squad, there are so many questions and not a lot of answers. In my opinion, don't know how you guys felt, but to me, it was just a confusing and all over the place squad. It was just a weird mixture of ingredients that at first glance don't seemingly go well together. The squad includes a couple of potential first teamers or people that will be in and around the first team for the qualifiers, a couple of benchers who will provide decent depth and a number of C teamers, probably even D teamers who will more than likely be nowhere near the World Cup qualifying squad. There are a couple of new arrivals that I am pleased to see. Obviously Pinnock, Moore, Bell, Harding and to a lesser extent Gray. And some of these names like Moore and Gray we already knew were coming. But Pinnock caught most of us off guard. So I'm very happy to see the defensive depth that our team currently possesses. Pinnock and Moore especially are two very good defenders and both will more than likely be our centre-back pairing in the qualifiers. Barring the arrival or barring if Mason Holgate decides to come and play for us. So the more games they play together, the better. Even though I would suggest we pair Pinnock with Damian Lowe against a Mexico for instance. To compete in those aerial duels with Raul Jimenez. So I would also love to see Pinnock and Lowe get some games together as well. Leading up to the qualifiers. What also impresses me about Moore is his leadership qualities. And how well he marshals his troops for Reading. And many of you would be aware that he is captain of Reading. And clubs don't normally give the captaincy to someone who isn't a very good leader. Or someone who lacks discipline. Right? He's a very disciplined defender when on the field of play. Bell also will be a decent backup to Lawrence. Who by the way has now found himself in the Anderlecht starting team and is doing well in Belgium. So I'm really happy for him. Wesley Harding will seriously be in the mix as well, as a right back and even as a centre back. Who I am happy has come on board as well is the Swansea striker Jamal Lowe. He can play as an out and out number 9 as well as do good things out wide. So I think his versatility is a welcomed addition. I really do love these kind of players who can play in multiple positions, especially when we have set squads for tournaments. So this asset of versatility can prove very useful to coach Tapa Whitmore and his goal scoring contribution for Swansea this season ain't bad either. He is a player that has an idea of where the back of the net is. Although admittedly, his goal scoring stats could improve. 
Casey Palmer is also a massive addition to the midfield of the team and Casey plays for Bristol City in the English League Championship and we are certainly grateful for his arrival. So basically, this team has been filled with a bunch of English-born players and a bunch of local based players to make up the numbers following the high profiled absentees, right? And with these locals, they don't even remember how to play football. It being so long since they have kicked a ball, then basically right now I relearn how to play a ball game. So on paper, we have some good defenders, but we have to remember these guys have never played with each other before and especially for the back line that is very important so for our defense names alone won't get us a solid back line for this particular game and i think we need to give pinnock and more and pinnock and low as much games as possible leading up to the qualifiers if mason holgate doesn't come before then if it's even to start low or more with Pinnock and have the other make a substitute appearance every game to pair up with Pinnock leading up to the qualifiers. And then again, there is that whole other issue of if Holgate chooses us. This midfield is also looking a bit weak even with the late inclusion of Palmer. And is looking like it might be consisting of one or two of the local base players as well. So you know we're basically going to have to surrender the midfield. Sit deep, work hard and as fans keep our fingers crossed. And pray and hope we don't get six like what happened to Panama and El Salvador. When them bought this US team. Or even worse... <laughs> The figures that appeared in the Trinidad game. Up front, we just have to wait and see how good as squad players Jamal Lowe and especially Andre Gray can be good for us. The latter who is currently having an unconvincing season goals-wise for Watford. I suspect Lowe will be played out wide and Gray will be deployed centrally for this game. And he will more than likely occupy a deep position to try and operate in that pocket of space in front of the US's defense. And hold up the play on the counter to try and find a pass to players making forward runs to get in behind. And also make runs himself to get in behind their defense on the counter as well. And I do expect the US will play a high line in this one. Given the amount of possession I think they will have. And how high up the pitch their entire team might be. It is also possible Low could be used as a second striker to play off Gray as well. Depending if Tapper goes with two up the front. If for instance he decides to play a 5-3-2. In my opinion though, it would be advisable to play with 5 at the back, especially when we are without possession. The goalkeeping department is incredibly inexperienced at this level as well and haven't stood between the posts for a while. So this is very worrying for me. I know the Americans will get a couple shots off in the early stages to test J.D. White's resolve to see if there are any nerves. I only hope the boy can keep his cool because boy oh boy he's going to need it. Because if it is one player on the field you don't want to have a bad game, it is the goalkeeper. Merciful father, <laughs> if this happens it could prove catastrophic right also the harsh reality is that people are going to find themselves playing who haven't played football in a long long time whether as starters 
or as substitutes. So people, brace yourselves. Sadly, this is likely to be a rocky ride. If Tapa gets a decent result in this one, I don't want to hear any more Tapa hate for now. I just pray to God this American team does not embarrass us because this is a US team that has been dropping some pretty hefty score lines in the region of late. Like against Panama, El Salvador and Trinidad. The only thing I hope that could give us a decent result in this game is that Tapa is surprisingly a very good coach at defensive organization which is a bit surprising given that he was an attacking player in his day. But the most important conclusion to be drawn from this large influx of debutants, some of them who reportedly don't even have a Jamaican passport as yet, is will our first team for the World Cup qualifiers play enough games together? Combine that with the current arms house that is taking place with a number of the regulars opting out? Does the JFF even have a realistic plan to achieve success going forward in the crucial upcoming months? Given this crisis that is currently taking place? Cause make no mistake about it guys, this is indeed a crisis. And I am sure the longer it continues, is the more Tapa is going to have to divert from his original plan and start to wing it. And this crisis is just throwing the whole preparation for the World Cup qualifiers out of whack. Oh, and by the way guys, to add to the chaos, the latest chaos is that the physical trainers are on strike and has not accompanied the reggae boys to Austria as the JFF is currently locked in a contract dispute with them as well. And they are boycotting. So allegedly, the JFF must find a physical trainer from Mount Pleasant and fling him on a plane to Austria. Man, right now this thing is just all over the place. What on God's earth is going on? The wheels look like them are come off. This whole thing was just rushed with no adequate preparation and is starting to look like a hot mess. From the outside looking in, the whole situation just seemed to be all over the place. JFF a cancer training camp at the last minute and rushing the local players out of the island. Physical trainers on strike, some of the players on strike. JFF are run all over the world trying to find players to fling into the team and physical trainers to train them. This chaos that is ensuing when the teams go on trips must be unbearable for the players. How them keep this team in the top 50? God he knows. How we as fans we expect this team to perform in so much chaos? My thing is, does Tapa even have the slightest clue right now what his starting 11 will be for the World Cup qualifiers? Will he have enough opportunities to look at everyone to make a proper assessment before the qualifiers arrive? Will he still be experimenting in the World Cup qualifiers? My thing is, we as fans don't even know what the hell is going on. And if you do, please let me know in the comment section. Because trying to study this JFF will hurt your head. I hear Tapa saying him want to try and win the Gold Cup. Will he be fielding our best possible team for the Gold Cup? How are we going to win the Gold Cup when we are still trying out players in the Gold Cup? And when our best team on paper right now, all the players have never played with each other. Some are yet to play. Will the same players that play Gold Cup be playing World Cup qualifiers? We will be getting players right before the World Cup qualifiers. That's for sure. Will we be using Gold Cup as a warm-up? 
and an integration tournament for the qualifiers, which at this late stage I think we should do, even though I personally wanted us to take a real shot at this Gold Cup. Has this arms house and unnecessary late influx potentially have cost us the Gold Cup? Because now we have to be using it to experiment and gel players. Again, so many questions, not much answers. US is basically giving us almost the full A team, with some exceptions. Our CONCACAF rivals are using these games to build chemistry and we are still trying out a ton load of players. This simply means that we are far behind our regional rivals in terms of preparation for the World Cup qualifiers. The thing is that most of the players that are going to feature in the World Cup qualifiers right around the corner to this date has never played for us. And for us right now, even the games that we seem to be playing between now and the Gold Cup aren't a sure thing because of this pandemic. My thing is, how many games will our best 11 get to play together before the qualifiers? Now the thing is, most of these players that have just come into our program never stood a snowball in hell's chance of making it for England. So there is no way they could have been holding out for an English call-up. It's impossible. And for some of them, they have been indicating for a while, for a good while, that they are interested in playing for us. So my question to the JFF is, why are they bringing them now? Why didn't they bring this crop or most of them from before? Haven't we learned from past lessons? A trailer load of new baller just a dropping at the team one time at the last minute. Are we to assume the JFF were not reaching out to them previously? If not, why? Because basically all of these new English recruits that we just brought into the squad for this game will be playing an integral role in the squad for the World Cup qualifiers. And let's face it, I would probably safely say that around three quarters of the entire squad that is going to play for us in the World Cup qualifiers have, up until this point, rarely or never played for us. Because more and more, these overseas born players just crawling out of the woodwork. Till every day we start sounding like DJ Khalid. Another one? No, I am not in opposition or objection to these guys representing us. As on paper, they are indeed better players. Playing at a higher level than most of our local born and definitely local based players. But my thing is, how is it at this late stage with the qualifiers right around the corner, the JFF just coming to dump these English players right in the Jamaican camp? Absolutely no team chemistry, whether on the pitch or in person. Absolutely none. Guys, we have seen this script before. I keep on saying it. We have seen this script before. When previous reggae boy teams that on paper should have gone to the World Cup and ended up failing miserably. Last minute, a ton load of players all of a sudden in the team. For starters, this creates division amongst the players who were there previously. Feeling away because he is there for a long time and overseas baller just appear out of nowhere and gone with him game at the very last minute. Add this to the fact that the players won't have any time to gel personally and get to know each other, while immediately being thrown into the fire of a potentially very stressful situation playing in the qualifiers. A situation which will see their varying emotions running very high. All of which 
will make it even harder to facilitate unity if at any point things not going right in the qualifying. Guys, this could be potentially a recipe for disaster. You hear what Albert Einstein said the definition of madness was? We're really going to be doing the same thing over and over again and end up going nowhere? It just really baffling to me guys how the JFF bringing this new crop in now. And these players would have known long time that them can't make the English team. And they more than likely don't care about the paychecks they will be getting from us either. So the JFF can't use money as an excuse why they are just bringing in these players now. Again, look at our opponents. They are playing us with almost their entire roster, with almost their full squad, playing all their big players together, getting as much game time as possible and building team chemistry. And you can see the unity in the American team for example. Even when the players them score or even when a goal is scored for the US, you just see how the players them hug up them one another and you can see that there is a strong bond there. So unfortunately, it look like we just have to make do. More and more, the Gold Cup for us is looking like it is going to be a warm-up tournament for the World Cup qualifiers. Trying out new players and new tactics with these players to see how they respond and who can do what, and who can do what where. So basically, we are not going to be making a full and prepared charge at the Gold Cup, which is very unfortunate for me because I really wanted us to try and win the Gold Cup and also to qualify for the World Cup qualifiers. The fact of the matter is, if we had our act together, we could do both and have our cake and eat it too with, the, with winning the Gold Cup and qualifying for the World Cup qualifiers. But I guess we just have to roll with the punches. But right now, it is looking like this program is lacking direction and the path forward is not clear. We look like we're doing the same thing as always, winging it with no clear plan. I am not saying this is actually the case. I am saying it is looking like this is the case. What is the direction this thing is going in? We're not hearing exactly what the direction is and we're not seeing it either and I don't think the JFF know either. We get there trying out new players given the circumstances and the local base players are just filling in. But right now, the chaos is severely affecting our preparation for major tournaments. I just hope we can get it together real, real quick. And that we get a positive result in this US friendly as well. Alright guys, that's my two cents. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the Formula Sports channel and until next time.